Adverse events following immunization or AEFIs have been identified, reported and investigated in several health facilities throughout your district. If AEFIs are happening more frequently than expected in individual facilities or across the district, this could point to a problem within your immunization program. But you will not know for sure until you analyze the data. As a district or sub-national manager, it is your responsibility to analyze AFI data on an ongoing basis. This will help you monitor the performance of your AFI system, identify problems such as immunization errors or vaccine quality defects, and take prompt action when needed. Before you analyze data, always make sure to verify the data for accuracy. To analyze AFI data, you will need to collect data from all case reports in a line list, sort data by person, time and place, group data by antigens and by type of AFI, calculate AFI rates and compare them with expected rates, and use data and key indicators to monitor the performance of your AFI system. First. Collect all reported AFI cases into a line list. An AFI line list is a list of people who experienced AFIs during the reporting period. A line list allows you to consolidate and organize the details on each case for each health facility and for the district as a whole. One row of information is written for each case about when, where and who was affected and information about the adverse event and outcome. Next, sort the data from the line list by person, time, and place. This can help you identify clusters or other patterns for further investigation and follow-up action. When you sort the data by person, you can analyze which groups, such as age or gender, are most affected. This table shows AFI cases by age. You can see that most AFI cases are being reported in 1 to 4-year-olds. You can also sort data by time, such as the onset of AFIs after vaccination. This table reveals that most AFIs occurred within one to two days after the vaccine was given. And sort data by place. Where are AFIs occurring? This spot map shows AFI cases in five different districts. Assuming that all districts have about the same population, you might recommend that District 5 is prioritized for AFI investigation. You would do the same for health facilities within a district. At the district level, sort by specific clinics and health facilities reporting the AFI. Next, group the data by specific vaccine and type of AFI. Analyze data by antigen or vaccine such as BCG, pentavalent, or measles, and by type of AFI such as high fever or abscess. Organizing the data in this way can help you identify cases that may be due to vaccine defects or potential immunization errors. For example, an increased number of abscesses by one facility is more likely to be due to an immunization-related error. Of course, be careful to consider the size of the population served when comparing AFI data. Then, use the data to calculate the rates of reported AFIs. An AFI rate is the number of cases reported for a specific AFI during a specific time period, such as a month or quarter, divided by the total number of doses administered of that antigen. If the antigen is administered more than once, such as OPV, calculate AFI rates by first, second, or third dose. In this case, the number of doses administered for that dose should be used as the denominator. At the sub-national level, you might calculate the rate per 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, or even per 1 million. Then, compare the rates you calculated with expected rates. These rates are available as WHO Vaccine Reaction Information Sheets. 
If your calculated rate is higher than the expected vaccine reaction rate by WHO, there is likely a problem that you need to investigate. For example, let us say you have received reports of children suffering a rash following measles vaccination across all the facilities in your district. You have calculated a case rate of 25 per 100 doses. The WHO information sheet for MMR shows an expected rash rate of 5 per 100 doses. Since the rate for the district is significantly higher than the WHO rate, there is likely a problem that needs investigation. Once you have done this comparison, report your findings to the national level. Finally, remember to use AFI data and key indicators to regularly monitor the performance of your AFI surveillance system. Is your AFI system quickly identifying, reporting, and responding to AFIs? To find out, you would use key indicators such as the number of AFI reports received from clinics, facilities, or districts in a given time period, for example, the AFI reporting rate per 100,000 population vaccinated or doses administered. To monitor the timeliness of AFI reporting by a health facility or the district as a whole, an indicator might be the percentage of serious AFI reports received within a specified time, according to national recommendations. Include indicators to monitor the completeness of the AFI forms, such as the percentage of AFI report forms with completed information. And monitor the timeliness of case investigation, such as the percentage of serious AFI cases investigated within 48 hours of occurrence, according to national policy. As a supervisor, check on areas that are not reporting AFIs or submitting zero reporting, to determine whether there are no AEFIs or if this is due to failure to report AEFIs. We have reviewed key steps for analyzing AEFI data.